Hello booktube, Sarah here and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm coming to you with my April 2017 wrap up. So I am really hoping that this is not going to be hideously long like my March wrap up was. Um, I'm going to try and keep this short and sweet. I see a lot of people who do like part one and part two of wrap ups and I'm like, oh, geez, I wish really think I maybe I should do that. But I like the way that I do my wrap ups. Like I find that the people who do those do these are the books I read at the beginning of the month and these are the books I read at the end of the month where I kind of like doing the least favorite to most favorite books. So we're going to keep with this, but I'm going to try my very, very best to keep this at a relatively good length. <laughs> so let's jump in and get started. Um, so first of all, let's start off with my stats for the month of April. I read 14 books this month, guys. 14. Blown away. You know, literally mind blown. Um, my Goodreads goal, I am currently two books ahead of schedule. Um, I had six four-star reads, one three-and-a-half-star read, five um, three-star reads, and two two-and-a-half-star reads. There were no five-star reads this month. But I still read a lot of good books, and I'm really, really happy with everything. I read seven romance novels, four romantic suspense novels, a memoir, a nonfiction, and a cozy mystery. I read 13 adult novels and a YA novel. I read three books that were published um, in the 2000s, and I read 11 books that were published between 2010 and 2016. I read 11 ebooks and three audiobooks, and I read 13 no novels, excuse me, and one novella. Grand total, 4,018 pages for the month. That is roughly 129 pages a day. Now, I'm actually filming this on the 30th. Um, it is the afternoon of April 30th. But I know I am not going to finish, start and finish another book today, so that's why I figured I'll sit down and do this now. So let's get into the books that I actually finished this month. So the first book, and unfortunately my least favorite book of the month, was Once Upon a Wedding by Stacey Connolly. I gave this two and a half stars. It has an average rating on Goodreads of 3.25 stars. It was published back in 2009. It is a Harlequin or a Silhouette special edition novel. And it is book one in the McLean and uh, Delgado series. I think it's only a duology. Um, I only ever saw two books, and like I said, it was published in 2009, so I don't see the author writing a bunch more books for this series. The story was okay. I didn't hate it, but it was insta-love. And it was, it was just a weird story. Like, the whole premise of the story is, is that um, the main character, what was her name? Sorry, Kelsey is um, planning, is the wedding planner for her cousin's wedding. Now, her cousin is perfect. She comes from a very well-to-do family, blah, blah, blah. And Connor um, is Kelsey's ex-boyfriend. I guess they dated in high school. And he was from the wrong side of the tracks. The bad boy rode a motorcycle. You know, the, the stereotypical bad boy, right? And her parents, of course, did not want them together. So they pretty much paid him off to leave town. And he did. And then he, she met up, um, Emily, which is the cousin who's getting married, met up with him. And this is part of the story that kind of I didn't get, that she wanted him to be at the wedding. Now, from the sounds of it, it sounded like they didn't date very long in high school, like perhaps a couple of months. And 10 years later, you're going to a guy that you dated in high school for a few months to help you, you know, get out of your wedding. Like, Emily bothered me as a character, and she wasn't even the main character, Kelsey was, um, because she couldn't stand up to her parents and say, you know, I don't want to marry so-and-so. That she hired Connor because he's a private eye to look into him so that she would have a reason to break off the wedding. Um, not wanting to marry the guy should be reason enough, in my opinion, but say la vie. But, you know, like, that was the bulk of the story. And then Kelsey and Connor, of course, have a relationship. And it just, like, the way Kelsey talked about Connor, it's like that she had known him her whole life. And that he was her ex-boyfriend and what have you. And it was just... Some about it just didn't, I don't know, I just didn't care for it. Um, the second novel in the series is about Emily, because obviously, spoiler alert, she never married the guy. But she ends up um, having a relationship with Connor's best friend. And I do like the character, uh, Connor's best friend. Um, I can't remember his name now. But I think I might pick up the next book and read it, because I am interested in, in hearing his story. But more, I'd like to see Emily get a backbone, um, because I think that that was severely lacking in this book. And I think that's one of the main things that gave it such a low star rating. The next book I want to talk about is The Best Laid Plans by Sarah Mayber Mayberry. This is a Harlequin super romance novel. 
Um, I gave it 2.5 stars. It has an average rating of 3.71 stars on Goodreads, and it was published back in 2010. I really, really want to like the story because I love the cover. <laughs> I know that's ridiculous. That's so superficial, isn't it? What bothered me about this story is that these two characters, um, oh gosh, I cannot remember their names, Alexandra and, I'm sorry, I don't have his name written down, but they're co-workers. They're both, I think, lawyers for the same firm, and, you know, they know each other through work. They, you know, water cooler, and they play racquetball together once a week, so really their lives consist of office and, you know, playing a sport for an hour every week. And she's 39 now, um, and she really wants to have a baby, and she kind of has a breakdown on the racquetball court. Well, less than a week after that, he is offering to be the father of the baby, and I just found it so unrealistic, like unbelievably unrealistic. Thankfully, um, about halfway through the story, that whole plan got squashed, and then it became a very sweet love story between the two of them. But the whole baby thing really, really bothered me. I know that was the whole premise of the story that, you know, um, but it just, it really, really irked me that he was willing to do that for somebody he really doesn't even know that well. And, you know, he likes but doesn't love. It just, I don't know. It, I, I'm glad it kind of redeemed itself. Um, if it hadn't, it would have gotten a much lower star rating from me. But it did redeem itself with, you know, the fact that they decided that maybe this wasn't such a good idea and went from there, but um, yeah, this wasn't a favor of mine. Sarah Mayberry has done a lot better novels than this one. Next up is a book called Unlucky in Love by Jill Sanders. I gave this book three stars. It has an average rating of 3.88 stars on Goodreads. It was published in 2016 and is the first book in the Lucky series. I enjoyed this book. My issue with it was it was only 188 pages, which is fine. I mean, you can tell a really good story in that amount of pages, and, and the author did. There was just too much going on. For that small amount of pages, there was a lot of plot in this book. And, I mean, this poor girl has, like, the worst luck. And, you know, she gets a new car and, cr and it gets in an accident immediately. She almost gets hit by another car. Her ex-boyfriend, um, you know, while she's at work, clears her out and leaves town with all of her stuff. You know, I mean, it, it was a really, really interesting story. And it was a lot of fun. And I am going to continue with the series. But I just felt that there was a lot of things happening, like... This poor girl couldn't catch a break, and, you know, there had to be a breaking point, and it got to be a little bit ridiculous, if you know what I mean. But all in all, it was still a really fun contemporary romance story, and um, I think it's at a fairly reasonable price on Amazon if you're interested in checking it out. I believe it is self-published. Um, Jill Sanders is a good author, and, and I really did enjoy it, but, you know, there was just a little bit too much going on for such a short novel. Next up is one of the audiobooks that I listened to this month, and that is Seriously, I'm Kidding by Ellen DeGeneres. I gave this book three stars. It was narrated on audio by Ellen DeGeneres. It has an average rating of 3.72 stars on Goodreads. It was published in 2011. Off the bat, I am a huge fan of Ellen, and I saw this book was available at my library for, um, for Overdrive for audio, and it was only like three hours long, and I thought, oh, that'll be such a fun little quick read um, during the week on my way to and from work or at the gym. And I really enjoyed it being narrated by Ellen. Unfortunately, this didn't live up to what I thought it was going to be. Um, I've seen Ellen do stand-up, and she's fabulous. I love her television show. But this one did was not was not super-duper funny. Do you know what I mean? There were some parts of it that made me laugh and made me giggle, but nothing that had me like her stand-up. Like, her stand-up makes me crack up laughing. A lot of these, like, they were little essays, and they felt almost like little monologues. Like, if you've ever watched her television show, at the very beginning, she always does this, like, two to five minute long, or, like, two to three minute long monologue. That's what these felt like to me. Like, the one thing I will say, though, is that this is something that the whole family could listen to. She doesn't swear in this or anything like that, and I really do appreciate how candid she kind of was with, um, you know, her marriage to Portia and all those things. You know, that part of it was great, and I have, you know, no problem with her. I just expected it to be funnier, and I was a little disappointed that it wasn't, but I'm definitely still going to check out her other books um, to see if they're more like her stand-up. If you guys have read them, could you let me know if they're all more like this or if they're, um, you know, something different um, or if the other ones are funnier? But, again, if you're a fan of Ellen, I highly recommend it. It's only three hours long, and, you know, You've got to listen to it on audio, too. There's one thing to read the book, but to listen to it on audio and have her narrate it to you is a lot of fun. 
Next up is a book I started and finished within like an hour, and that is Cherry Blossom Cappuccino by Courtney Hunt. I gave this book three stars. It has an average rating of <coughs> excuse me, 3.8 stars on Goodreads. It was published in 2016, and it is book number four in the Cupid's Coffee Shop series. This is the novella. It was like 40 pages long. This was so adorable. What I'm absolutely loving about this series is that, you know, all the stories are kind of centered around this little coffee shop in this little small town. But you're not just specifically getting your 20 to 30 something year old contemporary romance stories um, for 20 to 30 something year olds. This story featured a couple in their 70s and it was a second chance at love story. It was really, really sweet. I really, really liked it. I really don't have a lot to say about it because it was only 40 pages long. But I absolutely love this series, and I think it would be really fun to do a bind-up of all 12 and be able to purchase, like, and just read them one after another. I think it would be a lot of fun as, like, separate little, you know what I mean? Anyway, really, really great little story. I absolutely loved it. Fantastic addition to the series. The next book is Protection Detail by Shirley McCoy. I gave this one three stars. It has an average rating on Goodreads of 4.07 stars. It was published in 2015, and it is the first book in the Capital Canine Unit. This is a love-inspired suspense novel, and the series is essentially about um, uh, law enforcement officers who have um, uh, service animals or service dogs. And this was a really, really great story. I think there's like six books in the series, and they actually all follow a story arc. So the story begins in this one, because, it, and then at the end of this one, the main big issue that started off the series is not wrapped up. You've got to go to the next one. And I was kind of reading ahead the plots for some of the upcoming books. And, you know, other aspects of this case jump up in the next ones. So, you know, this is like an overall, like, mini-series. So it's, it's really, really good. Um, the reason I did only give this book three stars is the main female lead, whose name is Cassie, drove me crazy. She was in danger. She runs a, a home for foster children. And he, um, the gentleman in the story, Gavin, um, him and his dog, I think the dog's name is Glory, he's, you know, a trained specialist. And she keeps throwing herself in harm's way, and she won't listen to him. And I just wanted to shake her and say, if people are shooting at you, you need to stop it. And I mean, she was totally concerned about her children, her kids in this home, and I fully understand that. But you know what? You being dead is not going to help them. And and it, that really, really bothered me. Um, and then she kind of started to come around towards the end. So there is an ending to this. Like, you could stop if you really wanted to and not continue on. But I'm definitely going to be continuing on because I want to know who done it. Like, I want to know the who done it as the story progresses. So, yeah. I mean, it was a really, really cute story. It was a really quick read, and I thoroughly enjoyed it. My next audiobook for the month was Sleepless in Manhattan by Sarah Morgan. Um, this I gave three stars to. It actually probably hit more to the 3.5 stars. Um, it was narrated by Jennifer Woodward. It has an average rating of 3.97 stars on Goodreads. It was published in 2016, and it is the first book in the From Manhattan with Love series. I really enjoyed this. I thought the characters were fantastic. I thought the narration of this audiobook was fantastic. Um, a story is pretty much about a woman who loses her job. And her and her best friends all work at the same, like, party event planning business in New York. And um, she loses her job. And then they decide to kind of start their own business. So the whole thing is her trying to get this business off the ground. Well, she's in love with this guy named Jake, who is her brother's best friend. And the relationship kind of goes from there. The whole contemporary romance aspect of the novel goes from there. And it's really, really well written. My issue and why this book didn't get four or four and a half stars was because the main character, uh, whose name I cannot remember, Paige, Paige, um, this is why I'm so glad I write this stuff down, um, she actually has a congenital heart condition. And I was like, oh my gosh, reading about a character who's got something like I have, like was born with a heart condition. And it talks about how when she was a child and the amount of time that she spent in hospital, and I could totally relate. And the author had me right there, like had me at four and a half stars at that point until she obviously did not do her research because she continued on saying that the main character did not have to go see the doctor, that she was fixed or cured. You don't get cured with congenital heart disease. It would have taken a very simple Google search to look that information up. You know, I think it would have added more dimension to the character to state that maybe, you know, she did have to go to these doctor's appointments every year to check to make sure everything was okay. 
and you know she might not be fixed but she can still uh, you know she might not be cured but she can still live a full and healthy life you know she jogs every day she, she's active she's you know and I think it was a great representation but there were aspects of it missing and then the fact also that CHD or congenital heart disease is a big umbrella term um, it's like saying you have cancer you know I have cancer well what type of cancer do you have do, does that make sense and again this is something that I'm probably nitpicking on because I am I have this condition and you know I just it would have been really nice to have a little bit more research going into it because it was a big aspect of the story and it really did affect her life obviously and it wasn't just glossed over it was mentioned quite a number of times and it just would have been really really great if the author had done just a little bit more research and been able to more well round that aspect of the character to make her more believable um, to other people with CHD now someone who reads this who doesn't have that is not going to get that is not going to understand that but for me personally it was lacking and unfortunately it, it did take it down a bit of a star rating for me but outside of that I still really enjoyed it I do plan on reading the rest of the books in the series because I do love Sarah Morgan's writing and I have this is the kind of writing that I know that she can do the last book that I read um, the Puffin Island book I didn't love so much this one was fantastic the next book I want to talk about is The Arsonist by Mary Burton I gave this book three and a half stars it has an average rating on Goodreads of 3.72 stars this book was published in 2016 um, this was a reread for me but I haven't read it since about 2016 so it's been at least 10 years um, I love this book I love this book so much it was so so good it was about a man who is a um, fire fire marshal I guess and um, there's someone setting fires in Washington and at the very beginning of the book the perpetrator or the arsonist if you will is dead as far as everybody knows he's dead so the guy um, whose name is escaping me at the moment and I didn't write it down silly me he decides Gannon I think his name his last name is Gannon and that's what he went by he decides to go and you know kind of like step back and retire he's not very old but he's decided to retire um, out of the limelight and open like a motorcycle shop so the lead character the female in the book she's a reporter and she has heard rumors that the arsonist wasn't actually killed it was somebody else like he he um, set it up to make it look like it was him and so then it starts off that she goes to the small town to meet up with um, the chief fire investigator guy and then the fire start up again and it really did have me guessing through the story it was like I think it's this person oh no maybe it's this person or maybe it's this person um, and it was really really um, a really quick story like stuff just kept happening there wasn't a lot of downtime which is really really fun and the very end of the book really I'd forgotten how it ended and it was like oh yeah that's right and it, it it's kind of creepy at the end how how it's left I don't want to say any more but it was really really good and this is a silhouette int intimate moments novel like I said this book is like 11 years old but it is fantastic now I know Mary Burton still writes um, she writes mainstream now she's outside of the um, out of the category romance but if you are a fan of hers and you're reading her backlist still check this one out anyway even if you think you might turn your nose up at this like uh, category romance type book definitely check it out because it was so so good now we have murder strikes opposed by Tracy Weber um, I gave this book four stars it has an average rating of 3.72 stars on Goodreads it was published in 2014 and this is the first book in a downward dog mystery this was a cozy mystery but what I loved so much about it is that it was a little grittier than a typical cozy mystery it wasn't all rainbows and unicorns and a dead body like I find that a lot of cozy mysteries tend to be very very fluffy this one was a little grittier and I, and I really did appreciate that so it's about um, the main character named Kate owns and runs a yoga, yoga studio and she's not doing that great financially and there's this homeless man that she kind of befriends and he has a dog named Bella and then the homeless man gets murdered now none of this is giving anything away this is all in the plot if you read it on Goodreads you'll see all this and then the story goes from there that she's trying to investigate his murder because everybody even the police think that you know he was just a bum who died you know but she knows there was more to it than that and it was a really great story and I really enjoyed it I loved all the characters I love the dog um, like I said this is the first in the series there are four three more I think four in total so far and I'm really looking forward to the rest of them I think I already have this I think I have all the rest of them I might have two and four but I might be missing three but we'll see 
What I kind of wish was in here, as someone who does yoga, and the author is actually, I believe, a certified yoga instructor, which, uh, a little bit about me, is one of my goals in life, is to become a certified yoga instructor. And um, I think it would have been a lot of fun. Like, if you read the um, Joanna Fluke, um, Hannah Swenson series, as you go through the chapters, you get, like, cookie recipes. I think it would have been really fun at the very end of this book to have, like, a yoga sequence, like, if you follow yoga, you know what I'm talking about, like the sun salutation where you're doing like a bunch of different stretches to create a sequence. I think that would have been a lot of fun for the author to include that in the back, but eh, we can't have everything. So yeah, so anyway, I really enjoyed this book. Like I said, four stars. If you like Cozy Mysteries, definitely check it out. There were some sexy times in this. Not a lot. It was one scene. It wasn't overly graphic, but just an FYI that it, that is in there. And because typically in Cozy Mysteries, you don't see that. So I just wanted to give forewarning for anyone who might not be interested in reading something like that. So there you go. So many books, you guys. All right, next one is <laughs> Dark Whispers by Deborah Webb. This is, uh, I gave this book four stars. It has an average of 4.21 stars on Goodreads. It was published in 2016, and it is the first book in the Faces of Evil Private Eyes series. I really enjoyed this, and it read so quickly. It's about a woman who pretty much shows up at this private investigation office and is like, I just killed a man, but I don't remember doing, or no, she comes in saying like she killed somebody, but the body's not there and she can't find the gun. And then it kind of goes from there. And there's this whole backstory that this poor woman had suffered a traumatic brain injury and how she's dealing with it in her day-to-day -day life and her family and um, what's like happening, um, you know, that she's not remembering stuff that was going on prior to her accident where she fell down the stairs and, and like hurt her head. She was in a coma for quite some time. All this happens well before the story started, and it was just so fast-paced and so, so well-written. Deborah Webb writes romantic suspense like nobody's business. It is fantastic, and what I loved is, like, this is an offshot of the original uh, the original Faces of Evil series. Um, this is like a, um, what do you call it, just like, um, you guys know what I'm talking about, um, and um, a side series, if you will, and I want to go back now and read the original Faces of Evil series, because a lot of the characters from that are brought into this, but nothing's really given away. Um, the romance aspect of this was well done. Um, it didn't happen till almost the very, very end. And, you know, they kind of fought it, and it wasn't an insta-love thing, and he was really more concerned with protecting her and finding out what was going on than trying to get her into bed. But it was still really well done, and I really did enjoy it. So if you're into that, definitely check this one out. Next up we have... Uh, the Mental Floss History of the World, An Irrelevant Romp Through Civilization's Best Bits by Eric Sass and Steve Weingard. Um, this was narrated on audio by uh, Johnny Hiller. I gave this book four stars. Um, it has an average rating of 3.89 stars on Goodreads, and it was published in 2008. I can't really give you a plot to this one because it's the history of the world, but this was an absolutely fantastic book. I adored the audio. The, uh, the narrator was just peppy enough to make it not sound textbook. And there were so many parts in this that were really, really fun. And, you know, we're really, like, we're actually quite humorous. And, you know, he kind of, he does talk about some of the big things that happened, like the World Wars or Columbus discovering America. But they're almost glossed over in favor of some of the smaller things that happened that people don't talk about. And it was very reminiscent to me of one of my very favorite audio podcasts I listen to all the time, and it's called um, Stuff You Missed in History Class which is those, like like it says in the title, those irrelevant things that you don't hear about because they weren't that big a deal, quote-unquote, if you will. And But they're still really interesting, and I really enjoyed this. And this literally goes back to prehistoric times up until, like, 2007. If you're into history, definitely check out the audiobook. Like I said, the narration was really great. It's about 15 hours long, 16 hours long on audio, but absolutely worth it. I loved it. If you are a history fan, definitely check it out. Next, we have Sweet Little Lies by Jill Shalvis. Uh, I gave this book four stars. It has an average rating on Goodreads of 3.97 stars. It was published in 2016, and this was the first book in the Heartbreaker Bay series. I, I love this. This is a typical Jill Shalvis contemporary romance. It's about a woman who um, her parents um, caused an accident that affected the lives of a bunch of other people. And this poor woman now is trying to make all those families' lives better because she kind of blames her family for destroying other families. So that's the whole premise behind the book. And she meets up with um, 
the main lead character, I think his name is Finn, sorry, I didn't have it written down, and, you know, they, of course, start a relationship, and then, you know, things come out in the open and whatever. I really, really enjoyed it. There was a lot of sexy times in this book. Jill Chalice is famous for that. Um, they were still really well written. Uh, there was no one-dimensional characters in here. <clears throat> the characters were well thought out. The plot was well thought out. And there was a dog in this book that the main character has that has an attitude problem, which was fantastic. Um, I don't know what it is about animals, but they're just like, when you include animals and the animals have very distinct personalities, it just makes the story that much better for me. My only concern, and this didn't decrease the star rating, and not concern, my only problem with this book, and it did not decrease the star rating at all because I based my star ratings on the book itself. I'm not superficial, but I just have to say, I really don't like that cover. What is she doing with that? Is it a t-shirt? Like, what, are they camping? I, I, I can't figure the. I don't like the cover of this book. I'm sorry. Um, I'm trying not to be superficial, but it's it's true. <laughs> In my opinion, I don't like it. But other than that, the story itself was great, so definitely check it out. Okay, down to the last two books, guys. Um, the next one is The Uninvited by Heather Graham. I gave this one four stars. has an average rating of 4.06 stars on Goodreads. It was published in 2012, and this is book number eight in the Crew of Hunters series. This has to be one of my favorite ones so far. So this one takes place in Philadelphia in an old house where um, uh, it's like pre no it's like Revolutionary War time and um, uh, there's people okay the house is from Revolutionary War time and there's people who work there in modern day and they take people on tours of this house and talk about what it was like back then and they're in costume and you know that kind of thing right well one of the actors or tour guides is murdered and that's where the story starts off. So there's the ghosts end up in the story as they always do. Um, the crew of hunters get helped by the ghosts. I think what really set this one apart for me from some of the other ones is that the main character, Allison, did not believe in the ghosts. And that made it that much creepier to me. When your main character totally believes in the ghosts and stuff like that, it's kind of like, yeah, okay, whatever. But when even the main character is terrified and you're reading some of these scenes, it just gives you goosebumps. Like, they're not scary scenes. Like, she's being visited by her friend who was murdered. But it's just creepy. And it was so good. And what I'm realizing, the more and more I read these, what makes me love them so much is the historical aspect of them. Almost every single book has a historical aspect. Something that happened in the past that is affecting current times or modern times. And I love that. And I love that she's delving into the history and you learn about stuff. Like, I was learning about the Revolutionary War as I was reading this. And it was thoroughly, thoroughly entertaining. This was another great addition to the series, and I am so happy I am choosing to read through it because I just love it. And finally, my favorite book of the month. And this one actually was not a surprise to me that it ended up being my favorite book of the month because the first book in the series was one of my top five reads of 27, 2016. This did not rate five stars, but it's really pushing out a 4.5 star. And that is Walk the Edge by Katie McGarry. Um, that I gave this book four stars, but like I said, it's almost more bordering on a 4.5 star. It has an average rating of 4.25 stars on Goodreads. It was published in 2016, and this is the second book in the Thunder Road series. So this is a series that is, like I, I think I said it's a YA series, and it's almost like Sons of Anarchy meets West Side Story, but with teenagers. What I love is the teenagers are not your typical teenagers. There is still a lot of angst in this book. Oh my god, the teenage angst. But... <laughs> There's, just to be forewarned, if this is not something that would interest you, there is drinking, there is swearing, um, there's, they talk about sex, but I'm trying to remember correctly, I don't believe that actually happens, and if it does happen, it happens behind closed doors, if you know what I mean. Um, but yeah, it was so, so good. It's about a girl named Brienne, and the guy who's in the motorcycle club's name is Razor, his real name is Thomas. And she is like the quiet, studious girl in school. And um, she kind of wants to, for her senior year of high school, be a little bit more daring. And she ends up, her picture ends up on one of these social media things. I think in the story it's called a bragger. But I would almost put it towards like Instagram, if you were to put it to something that is real. Um, and it was actually kind of scary to read that I am so thankful I'm not a teenager anymore and don't have to live in this world of social media, that this girl's picture goes up and, you know, suddenly, you know, she's getting called a slut and she's getting called this and that. And it wasn't even anything that was 
that was bad in the picture. It just, the way that her and Thomas were standing together, it made it look like something was going to happen. Does that make sense? So, it, you know, it was really, really thought provoking reading this book and realizing the effect that social media has on teenagers nowadays. And that's frightening. This was so well written. The characters are so thought out and so well done. Um, there's a third book in the series that I'm really looking forward to reading. I, I, I have it on my TBR and I will be getting to it. If not, I'm hoping even later this year to finish it off. And you guys know I'm not a fan of YA. Um, but this series is so good. Again, you've got teenagers. There's underrated drinking in this. There is um, sex is implied in this. Um, there's no drug use or anything like that. There is guns in this. Um, this is not your lovey-dovey typical, you know, just angst-filled YA novel. This is a lot grittier. And it's really, really good. Highly recommend it. Oh, and the other thing that I wanted to say really, really quickly about Walk the Edge, I just looked it back down at my notes as I was finishing up. The very end of this book, um, she actually, the author, put a playlist at the very end. And it included songs for like certain scenes in the book and what song would be playing like if it was a movie. And I, what I loved, and I had to point it out because it's so very rare that this happens, she included a lot of country music songs. And as a huge country music fan, that really, really, like, you know, tickled me <laughs> to say. I really loved it, and I thought that was a lot of fun. And I don't remember if that was in the first book or not. I might have to go back and look. But I really, really enjoyed that. So, again, definitely check this book out. So, anyway, guys, that is it. I hope I was able to keep this relatively shorter than the last one. If not, I apologize. I know, like I said, a lot of people will break these up and do, like, a part one and a part two. But I like the way that I do these, and I think it's a little bit more fun. Um, they're a little bit longer, but it is what it is. Um, if you're interested in any of the books that I talked about, as usual, I will leave a link in the down bar or in the description box below to all the books that I talked about, along with links to find me on social media. And until my next video, guys, take care and happy reading. Thanks for watching. Bye.